for my whole lifetime up until most recently, um, the U.S. has always been the leader in education. We've always had the best education system. I think it was it was a foregone conclusion that our education system was the best there is. And now, in um, in using tests, problem solving tests that are given to 15 year old kids from 57 countries around the world. They do this every year in different subjects, not just science and math. Our kids are in the middle and we used to be at the top. If you look back, say 50 years ago, the United States led the world in manufacturing and all that and innovation and technology. And in the past 30 years, that's been going down the toilet. Most things now made in China. But the one thing that China still looks towards the US for is innovation. If we don't train and educate our young people in science and math, then we won't have any future innovators. And then what have you got? About 17 years ago, um, I started working with uh, Thel Melton, who's a digital artist in the college. He was interested in learning how to make 3D models and animations. He's an artist. And I was interested in a way to teach veterinary students better than what I'd been doing. And so we teamed up and made, he made models of the horse's GI tract and animated diseases. Um, and the students said that it helped. Um, they could see what I was seeing and it helped them understand the processes better. They would tell me that they could kind of play that movie back in their mind later on. And so as a result of that, I started collaborating with Steve Oliver in the College of Ed and Tom Robertson in physiology. And we said, well, if it's working on vet students, let's go after a population that's, that's at greater risk and greater need. And that's kids in high school. I've never been involved with a project with so many different departments and colleges involved. We have people from vet med, physiology, biology, physics, chemistry, music. And so Building 11 is kind of innocuous. It, it, who would know that from that every week in this building we have a meeting that brings people from all over the place. Even people will drive here from um, uh, the Georgia Medical College uh, just to be a part of this community. The overall goal of the project, long-term goal, is to improve science education in, in the United States. Um, we need to engage students and give them media and materials that they like, rather than giving them a thousand page textbook which they don't like. And so we're trying to make interactive games and case studies that give the information that they're learning in science classes some context so it means something to them. The idea of the interactive case studies came about with the very first meeting we had with teachers. And in that meeting, someone said, well, uh, you know, our students really like case studies and, and maybe you should look at doing that. And, and that just helped things fall into place because a case study was contained. It, it was something we could define fairly easily. And most of these case studies that the teachers were using were just paper and pencil. Immediately after that meeting, we started looking at how our goal of teaching a concept like osmosis might fit into a case. An interactive case study is using modern technologies like game engines, great graphic design, 3D models, audio, all of those things that young people have become accustomed to seeing in interactive things that they experience all the time, bringing those into the classroom. The software that the animators use is also used in movies like Shrek and a lot of the Pixar movies. It's pretty much the best you can get. We put them in a role of being a veterinarian and they encounter this calf that has developed seizures. The student is, is required to figure out what's wrong. We put them into the brain and we say, you know, here are the, the pieces of this that you're going to be able to explore. So, the neuron of the brain, the blood that's flowing through capillaries in the brain, the interstitial areas of the brain, and we give them some meters on which they're going to collect data. 
and they find certain things are out of whack, they're not appropriate values, and they're too low or too high. And then we try to help them learn why those values are too high or too low, and then ultimately they're given an opportunity to pre prescribe treatments, and they have to make some choices about what those treatments are. They prescribe the treatment, and they watch and see over a, a very collapsed six-hour time frame whether that makes the calf better or not. I was down at a, a school not too far from here. The teacher walked back to me and said, uh, said, look, said, I really struggle to get these students to read, but look, they're all reading the stuff you, you have on the screen because they really care about that calf. They want to save that calf. That's a powerful thing. Anytime you engage students in a learning activity where they have a goal they really want to accomplish, that's a powerful thing. So we've got three complete case studies now. One is on osmosis, which is Clark, who has cerebral edema. We have uh, one on filtration, which is a diabetic patient whose kidneys have failed. And we have one on diffusion, which is based on a train crash where chlorine was spilt and a patient is having trouble breathing. I started with this project in January of 2009, so shortly after the project had just started here. And uh, I came over here and uh, started helping them think through how they were going to implement the things that they were doing uh, with game technologies. My goals for the project have actually been to kind of push the envelope, uh, take what they're working on uh, with educational technologies and get them to think more about, well, adding games to the mix as well. Ozzy's funny. She's just a simple little cell that roams around uh, what appears to be a, a watery world with different hazards that present themselves, and the player has to learn to keep her in balance uh, through understanding osmosis. For me, seeing kids in the classroom jumping up and down, screaming, especially when Ozzy dies, uh, leaves an impression on me. And one kid came up to me afterwards, and he said, you know, I play a lot of games. No, wait, I play a lot of games. And this was really cool. He's like, I wish we had stuff like this. Um, and I've had other kids come and, and say, where can I get it? I mean, and what other form of education does a kid say, I want more, give me more, please. Uh, Aussie is available uh, on iTunes right now or on the Android market right now. Um, and teachers can actually get Aussie um, on iTunes for half price uh, for iPad, iPod Touch, iPhone. Um, and we've actually had some schools buy Aussie and distribute it this way. The case studies aren't available yet. That's actually one of the reasons why IS3D was formed, was to commercialize these, license, license them from UGA and make them available to all teachers, not just the teachers that we've been working with. We've got a vision to establish UGA as one of the leaders in the country in science education. And we've submitted 14 grants in the last 12 months, and we're starting to get some good scores and some hints of funding. So in the next three years, we want to build this effort here. And in order to make sure that it has an effect across the US, we have to have a commercial arm. So by having a small business side as well, then we can have a bigger impact because then we can partner with established companies to distribute it and touch as many classrooms as we can. And then the revenue from that can make more cool stuff for schools. I started out as a clinician, a clinical researcher essentially, somebody who did clinical surgery and also ran a research lab and did that for the majority of my career. Um, this project I see having potentially having a big, bigger impact than anything I've done previously. So um, I think this is the most important thing I've been involved with. I want to bring something that re-engages our students and gets them passionate about the things that I'm passionate about, right? Whether that's games, science, math, technology, I don't care. I want them to be passionate about something. I come from the city center of Manchester and not many of my peers made it out of the city centre of Manchester, and it was science that got me out. So this project focuses on helping students from 
urban and rural backgrounds that perhaps don't get the chances that people in more privileged areas get. So the drive to help underprivileged kids, you know, have a career like I've had is, is central. What I think we can do with a project like this is we can make some of the learning of biology more interesting than it was before. I think we can make some of it a lot more interesting than it was before. I think that technology is going to take us away from the paper textbook and we have a real opportunity to do something interesting by building something that can replace parts of that and eventually all of that. And I think we should do it. I, I think the, the learning of biology has been very much the same across the 20th century. And now that we're in the 21st, well into the 21st, we need to make the biology book of the 21st century.